हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ माइंड मैप टूडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट ट्रीटीज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन देन रोल ऑफ ट्रीटीज इम्पॉर्टेंट ट्रीटीज इन द एटीन सेंचुरी ऑफ इंडिया इम्पॉर्टेंट ट्रीटीज इन द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी एंड प्रैक्टिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मूविंग ऑन टू द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द टॉपिक Since the ancient and medieval period wars and battles fought in India have long influenced the country's cultural and linguistic ethos all these wars were concluded by signing various treaties between various dynasties and empires these treaties further demarcated the changing territories and protocols of different empires various treaties like treaty of allahabad treaty of mysore etc are of great significance in the indian history now moving on to role of treaties The role of treaties vary from one treaty to another. It can be used to end wars, settle land disputes and even establish new countries. They also create the foundation for renewed relationships and a positive and stable climate that supports social development and economic growth. They have proved to be effective in establishing new rules. Now let's discuss about important treaties in the 18th century of India. Following are the important treaties in the history of India which shaped the country. First is Treaty of Asurar Ali. It was signed in February 1639 between Momai Tamuli Babaruhu who represented Ahom kingdom and Allah Yar Khan representing Mughals. A border between Ahom kingdom and Mughal territories was fixed. The Treaty of Asurar Ali ended the strife between Mughals and Ahom. Treaty of Purandar. It was signed on 11 June 1665 between Jai Singh I, commander of the Mughal empire and Shivaji. Following are the provisions. Out of his 35 forts, Shivaji handed over 23 forts to the Mughals, which had an annual income of 40 lakhs huns. Shivaji would send his 8-year-old son Shambhaji in the Mughal court in his place, where he found be given a mansab of 500. Shivaji was allowed to maintain his influence over the remaining 12 forts. Treaty of Ali Nagar. It was signed on 9 February 1757 between Robert Clive of the British East India Company. and the nawab of bengal mirza mohammad sirajuddaulah this treaty restored all the privileges that farukhshiyas 1717 farman had granted to the east india company it allows the east india company to carry out duty free trade build further fortifications and operate a mint treaty of paris the french and britishers rivalry in india or third carnatic war ended with the treaty of paris it was signed in 1763 As per the treaty, Chandnagar and Pondicherry were returned to France, but they were barred from fortifying them or having troops in them. They could only have trading activities. Treaty of Allahabad. It was signed on 16 August 1765 after the Battle of Buxar on October 23, 1764. It was signed between the Mughal Emperor Alam Shah II, son of the late Emperor Alamgir II, and Robert Clive of the East India Company. The treaty marked the beginning of the political and constitutional involvement of the British in Indian affairs. According to the treaty, Alam granted the East India Company diwani rights or the right to collect taxes from Bengal's eastern provinces of Bihar and Odisha. In exchange, a company paid an annual tribute of 26 lakh rupees. Next is Treaty of Salbai. It was signed on 17 May 1782 between British East India Company and the Marathas. It ended the first Anglo-Maratha war. Salsette would continue in the Britishers' possession. The Marathas were restored to all conquered provinces, including Bessin. The English and the Peshwa agreed to keep their various friends at peace with one another. Now moving on to important treaties in the 19th century of India. First is Treaty of Bessin. It was a pact signed on 31st December 1802. It was signed between the British East India Company and Baji Rao II. The treaty was a decisive step in the dissolution of the Maratha Empire. Treaty of Amritsar. It was signed on April 25, 1809. It was signed between Charles T. Metcalf, representing the British East India Company, and Ranjit Singh, head of the Sikh Kingdom of Punjab. By this treaty, Maharaja Ranjit Singh accepted the Satluj River as the boundary between Sikh Kingdom and British territories. Treaty of Yandabu. It was signed on 24 February 1826 after 2 years of the war between British and the Burmese. It was the peace treaty that resulted at the end of the first Anglo-Burmese war. Treaty was signed between East India Company and King of Awa. Awa was the capital of Burma from 1364 to 1841. Treaty of Lahore. 
It was signed on 9th March 1846. The Treaty of Lahore was signed between the British and the Sikhs. This treaty declared the end of the First Anglo-Sikh War during the year 1845 to 1846. Maharaja Dilip Singh, who was the ruler of Punjab, continued to remain its ruler with his mother Jindan Kaur as regent. The Sikhs had to surrender Jalandhar Doab to the British. In addition to all these, a British resident, Sir Henry Lawrence, was appointed to the Sikh court. Treaty of Amritsar. It was signed on March 9, 1846. By this treaty the British East India Company sold Kashmir to Maharaja Gulab Singh. Gulab Singh bought the state from the East India Company for a sum of rupees 75 lakh. The Treaty of Amritsar was a formalization of the proposals of the Treaty of Lahore and lastly Treaty of Bhirawal. It was signed on 16 December 1846. Rani Jindan was removed as the agent and rupees 1.5 lakh was given to her. A council consisting of 8 Sikh members was formed. which replaced rani jindan now it's time for the practice questions first of all prelims question first anglo maratha war was ended with which of the following treaty treaty of lahore treaty of paris treaty of salbai or treaty of seringapatam and now mains question what was the significance of treaty of allahabad in shaping the future of east india company in india so that's all for today stay tuned for the next episode thanks for watching